Well, hello class. We're now beginning a new chapter on materials and their properties. And I think you're going to find this to be an interesting chapter. We're going to talk about a variety of materials that we find around us in our daily lives. And the concept that we will be dis discussing is that all of these materials, while they have a variety of different properties, their properties depend upon their composition and the bonding that occurs at the atomic and microscopic level. Now we come in contact in our daily lives with a variety of different materials. We use them for construction, for clothing, for roadways, for the electronics. Uh, and these materials usually are of one of the following categories. They're usually a biomaterial, something as wood or cotton, a metal or an alloy, some type of ceramic or glass, a composite is when two or more things are combined together to improve properties, or synthetic polymers. Now synthetic polymers we've talked about in the last chapter and we've learned that a large category are what we call plastics. And anytime I think of plastics I think of a film clip which I'm going to show you and to give you a little context. Just imagine that you just graduated from college and you returned home and you're your mom and dad are throwing a party for you and they've invited over the neighbors and your your father's best friend from work wants to give you some sage advice. Ben, excuse me. Mr. McGuire. Ben. Mr. McGuire. Come with me for a minute. I want to talk to you. Excuse us, Joanne. Okay. Thank you. I just want to say one word to you. Just one word. Yes, sir. Are you listening? Yes, sir, you. Plastics. Exactly. How do you mean? There's a great future in plastics. Think about it. What do you think about it? Yes, sir, I will. I'm set. That's a deal. So the sage advice, plastics. In covering this chapter on material, I want to take a long view. In this slide, I show a timeline for the various periods of human civilization, going back to the Stone Age, of which there were uh, Paleolithic and Mesolithic and Neolithic, Old Stone Age, Middle Stone Age and New Stone Age, so I'm only showing up to the New Stone Age period of human history that goes up to about 4000 uh, BC. Then we had the Copper Age and Bronze Age, Iron Age, you've heard of these ages of man. And then in the AD period of time, we talk about the Middle Ages, the Renaissance, the Industrial Age, the Machine Age, perhaps the Silicon Age, sometimes we talk about the Atomic Age and sometimes even the age of plastics, which would be around the same time as the machine age and the silicon age on our, on our timeline. The reason I want you to, to consider these ages of mankind is to note that we give names for these ages that largely to reflect the important materials that had a great impact on the development of civilization at that time. The Stone Age, stones, copper, bronze, which is an alloy, iron, etc. And I'm going to expand upon this in the next slide, which blows up this timeline, which shows you a top row that gives the important metals used by man during these ages. Gold was one of the first metals discovered, then copper. Uh, bronze is an alloy, which we'll get to, and then iron. Of, of course, iron and copper and bronze were used to make tools, including weapons for hunting. Steel is an alloy of iron that has improved properties, being harder and, and less prone to oxidation, rusting. Into the AD era, we see that cast iron was very important, where metallurgists were able to melt the iron, pour it into molds to make various tools, including weapons, cannons, pistols, that sort of thing. Various alloys were developed in the last few centuries. I also note lodestone, which is magnetite, a magnetic ore, which was very important for the development of seafaring so that sailors could know their directions on the sea. The next area in this chart 
list a number of polymers that were important for the development of civilization, beginning with wood and skins and the fibers of plants which man used through antiquity to make shelters and for clothing. Later, man began using latexes of plants, glues, and rubber. And as we saw in a recent chapter, man then developed synthetic polymers, bakelite and nylon and polyethylene and polystyrene, Teflon, synthetic rubber. The next block gives a number of composite materials, and we'll be talking about composite materials shortly, but composites are a mixtures of two or more materials to improve the properties of the material. Waddle and daub is something you may want to Google and look up, but waddle and daub refers to using strips of wood or bark or bamboo, interweave these, and then apply clay or mud to sort of seal these together to make huts. One of the next important developments in the area of construction was making bricks by combining mud with straw to make a composite material that was much better for construction. Concrete is also a composite material in which cement is mixed with filler material to form a, a hard building material. There was improvement on that in Portland cement. But we will also talk about composite materials such as glass fiber reinforced polymers fiberglass, or carbon fiber reinforced polymers, or metal matrix composites. Stones and ceramics were also important in the history of mankind. Of course, the Stone Age refers to the fact that man used stones, both as weapons or in hunting and killing animals, but also used stone and flint to cut the carcasses, and also when agriculture was developed, stones and such things as uh, the antlers of animals and bones were used to plow the ground. Stones were used to grind the grain into flour. Pottery was important so that man could make containers. Porcelain, in recent years we'll talk about the development of silicon chips and diodes and the importance of these type of ceramics in our electronics industry. But first I want to point out that biomaterials have some properties that are very difficult to replicate. For example, it's hard to improve upon the strength per mass and the insulating properties of wood. And so we, we continue to use wood as a building material. The exoskeleton material of insects is, is hard to replicate. The photosynthetic receptors of plants you know, we're, we try to develop photoelectric devices, but it's, it's hard to approach the efficiency of plants. Rods and cones of our eyes are very sensitive in detecting light. The toughness and flexibility of skin is very hard to replicate by other material. And consider another biomaterial, spider silk, the fiber that comprises the spider webs. Spider silk has the tensile strength that is about five times that of steel. And so it should be no wonder that Spider-Man is so powerful against all of those villains. Now while natural biomaterials have a number of impressive and useful properties, mankind has always tried to improve upon these properties by making what are called composite materials or synthetic materials. Composite materials are those in which we mix two or more substances together to try to improve the properties of each. And synthetic materials are those made from scratch, essentially, like, like the synthetic polymers that we talked about recently. And this reminds me of the story of the three little pigs, which is very appropriate. If you recall the story, the three little pigs, one of the pigs built a home out of straw, a natural biomaterial. The second built a home out of wood, a stronger biomaterial, but the third little pig made his home out of brick, which is a composite material of mud and straw. And of course you remember what happened. The first home blew away when the, when the big bad wolf came and blew at the door. The second wooden home survived a little longer, but the home made out of the composite material could withstand the huffing and puffing of the big bad wolf. So we will talk about in the next few slides 
uh, various composite and synthetic materials and their properties. Now we'll take another break and have a little uh, quiz or exercise and come back later.